Hello, greetings to everybody. What's going on? What's happening? May peace and power elevation be to all you. This your girl Tiffany come through here live in the faith. And today's subject, I am continuing with blacks in journalism. All right. This one right here go to show that not only journalism is very important to the people, right? It's all it's very important to know information, to know what's going on in the community and what's taking place, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But also journalism can be a dangerous job too. It can be very dangerous and detrimental. Because your life is put at risk. And that means that you could be facing death when you give a report about certain people or certain groups, set, etc. And that's what happened with this particular journalist from Oakland, California. His name was Chauncey Bailey. All right. He was 57 years old when he lost his life. So now I'm going to go into the details and information. And I also have a book that uh, speaks on this whole entire thing or what happened. Okay. That I'm going to go over. But before I do that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the channel, share the channel, and hit the notification bell, and etc. and all that great stuff. All right. So until then, Ooh, excuse me. Until then, let's go ahead and get started. All right. So as I looked at this source and I was reading through it, Uh, I found some interesting things, but it's not something that is very unusual because we have heard stories about this before. And this has something to do with the nation of Islam in Oakland being involved in his murder. So we have heard about stories about assassination regarding to the nation, regarding to uh the fights people getting killed i know you guys heard about the hanafi movement and um about what happened to malcolm x etc um yeah it, it's been a lot of things you know it, it's not very uncommon to hear about assassination due to certain religious groups, especially like the Nation of Islam, because if we study about the history, that's what we know, right? And, and that's what we come across and that's what we learn. Now, it doesn't say that all the members in the nation is bad or that's their agenda goal but you have certain people who are very extremists and who would take it above and beyond to fight for their belief and to kill in the name of their god or their leader okay but let's go ahead and let's look into this story so as you can see right here where it says chelsea bailey that's a picture of him all right, so he was an American journalist noted for his work primarily on issues of the African-American community. He served as an editor-in-chief of the Oakland Post in Oakland, California, from June 2007 until his murder. His 37-year career in journalism included lengthy periods as a reporter at the Detroit News and the Oakland Tribune. All right. So let's go now. So he was born October the 20th, 1949. And he died August the 2nd of 2007. Okay. 
Now it says he was shot dead on a downtown Oakland street on August the 2nd of 2007. The victim of a crime syndicate, he was investigated for a story. His death outraged fellow journalists who joined together to create the Chauncey Bailey Project dedicated to continuing his work and uncovering the facts of his murder. In June of 2011, Yusuf Bay, the fourth owner of Your Black Muslim Bakery and his associate Antoine Macri were convicted of ordering Bailey's murder. A third man, bakery handyman, Devon, De Devondre Busser, had earlier confessed to being the trigger man. Bailey was the first African-American journalist killed for domestic reporting since 1976. All right. So let's go to his early years. So he was born in Oakland, California, into a Catholic family who were members of the St. Benedict's Catholic Church on 82nd Avenue. He lived in East Oakland neighborhoods for many years and attended Hayward High School in the nearby city of Hayward. Bailey earned an associate degree from Oakland's Old Merritt College, excuse me, Old Merritt Community College in 1968. And a bachelor's in journalism from St. Jose, St. St. Jose State University in 1972. So Bailey first wrote the Oakland Post in 1970 and made his foray into television news that year as an on-air reporter with station KNTV in St. Jose, California, where he continued through 1971. During the next three years, he worked at the San Francisco Sun Reporter. And in the mid-70s, Bailey moved to Hayford, Connecticut to work on the Hayford Courant for three years. After working for a year on the re to rewrite desk at U United Press International in Chicago, he returned to Oakland in 1978 and wrote for the California Voice through late 1980. Bailey again moved to Chicago where he worked as a publicist for the nonprofit Cobrant. I mean excuse me, yeah, Corbrandt Incorporated and then lo relocated to Washington, D.C. in 1981 to work for a year as press secretary for the freshman U.S. representative Gus Savage, okay? From 1982, Bailey spent the next decade as a reporter and columnist for the Detroit News where he covered city government and worked on special projects. In 1992, he returned to Oakland as public affairs director and newscaster on Bay Area Radio with station KDIA, which was co-owned by then mayor of Oakland. It was Elu Harris and then California Assembly Speaker Willie Brown. During this era, Bailey was seen throughout the 1990s as an interviewer and commentator on Soul Beat Television on the Oakland Cable station KSBT, where he worked alongside with former Oakland actress Lunell. Bailey worked at the Oakland Tribune from 1993 until 2005. In the mid-1990s, Bailey split from his wife. Okay. So, it says he quit in 2003 on the program of Soul Beat after he fell in his attempt to buy the station. His program was canceled in 2004. In 2005, he's, he began writing freelance travel stories for the Oakland Post. He became editor in June 2007 and then editor-in-chief of all five Post weeklies. The Post is the largest African-American weekly newspaper in Northern California, published in Oakland, California by the Post New Group and serving mainly Oakland, Berkeley, Richmond, and San Francisco. In late 2004, Bailey became one of the producer, co-founders, and hosts for Our TV, Opportunity and Urban Renaissance Television, on Comcast Channel 78. Bailey had been known for his aggressive questioning of city officials. Oakland police spokesman Ronald Hungren 
said, I know him as being a somewhat outspoken type individual assertive in his journalistic approach when trying to get at matters at hand. Right. So this is where they talk about the murder. So down here says Bailey had written several articles about the problems of your black Muslim bakery. Celine Bay, half brother of Antar and Yusuf the Fourth, had anonymously told Bailey believe both Antar and Bay the Fourth had looted the business. By this time, the business was in Chapter Eleven bankruptcy and was over one million dollars in debt. Wow. Bailey was shot and killed while working on a story about the finances of your black Muslim bakery involving its pending bankruptcy. The article was never published as Bailey walked to work on the Monday on the morning of August the 2nd, 2007. A van pulled up and a man jumped out and shot the reporter. According to a witness, the man had a long gun and ran full tit across the street. Oakland Fire Captain Melinda Drayton said Bailey had been shot first in the back and then once in the head. The killer was later identified as Devondre Bossert. He confessed to the murder, but after almost two years of incarceration, he agreed to testify against Bay IV in exchange for a 25-year sentence. He told authorities that Bay IV had a hit list of people he wanted to get rid of. Who had done stuff to the bakery and that Chauncey Bailey's name was on the list. So I want to say this before I go any further. Peace to the chat. Shout out to Brother Santavo. Uh, shout out to Brother Lion. Thank you for coming through. Thank y'all for coming through. So Busser was booked on suspicious of murder on August the 4th of 2007 for the killing of Bailey, having told police detectives that he considered himself a good soldier, though other charges were made against those arrests. None of them were charged with Bailey's murder. On August 7th of 2007, Busser was arraigned in was the Alameda County Sup Superior Court on charges of murder and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Buzzard testified for the prosecution at the trial of Bay IV and Antoine Mackley in 2011. He stated in court he was ordered by Bay to find, track, and kill Bailey before the journalist could print his latest article on the bakery. Bay IV and Mackley were both convicted of multiple counts of murder and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Okay. And so this was the uh, intercession in the area where this man was killed. And it says in March of 2020, the Oakland City Council voted to publicly memorialize Bailey by renaming a portion of 14th Street between Broadway and Oakland Street uh, and Oak Street to Chauncey Bailey Way, a street where he frequently walked to work before he died there. The street name was presented in a ceremony in March of 2022, which I have an article on that. Okay. So it also talks about the project that he has done, uh, uh, the, the Chauncey Bailey project. It says to continue Bailey's work and answer questions regarding his death, more than two dozen reporters, ph photographers, and editors from print, broadcast, and electronic media, as well as journalism, Students formed a group called the Chauncey Bailey Project. It was convened by New America Media, the Pacific News Service, and the Robert C. Maynard Institute for Journalism Education. So uh, in June of 2008, the, Bailey, the Chauncey Bailey Project released a secretly recorded police video that revealed how how black Muslim bakery leader Yusuf Bay the fourth kept the gun used the uh, Chauncey Bailey killing in his closet after the attack and Brad uh, uh, playing dumb when investigators asked him about the shooting. 
they goes on to describe Bailey's sh shooting in detail, then laughingly denies he was there and broke that his friendship with the case lead that the detective protected him from charges. Bay also claims he knew he was being recorded. Bay Area activist, investi investigative, investigative journalist, and radio talk show host J.R. Valerie has accused the Chauncey Bailey project of inaccurate and self-congratulatory reporting. Valerie's criticism largely stemmed from a 2008 Chauncey Bailey project article published in the Oakland Tribune entitled Evidence in Nord of which Valerie's connection to Chauncey your black Muslim bakery was one of the focuses. In 2010, Thomas Peel, Josh Richmond, Mary Fricker, and, and Butler received the McGill Medal for Journalistic Courage from the Grady College of Journalism and Mass Communication for their work on the project. All right, and I have a book that's written by Thomas Peel, okay? It's called Killing the Messenger. All right, so let's look up the story about this bakery. Your Black Muslim Bakery. Let's find out what is Your Black Muslim Bakery about. All right, so right here. Your Black Muslim Bakery was in... American chain of bakeries opened by Yusuf Bay in 1968 in Santa Barbara, California, and relocated to Oakland in 1971. Power broker at the center of a local community, YBMB was held out as a model of African American economic self sufficiency. However, it was later linked to widespread physical and sexual abuse, welfare fraud, and murder. Okay, so that's the logo right here. And that's the address that it was located. All right, so it says, at the base death in 2003, YBMB fell into debt and declared Chapter 11 bankruptcy in October of 2006. In August of 2007, in connection with investigation into the murder of Oakland Post journalist, Chauncey Bailey and a number of other crimes police conducted a massive raid on the company's St. Pablo Avenue bakery. A concurrent health inspection resulted in its closure. Later that day, a court ordered the pending reorganization converted into a liquidation bankruptcy. Mm. All right. So it goes into the history. Uh, this is the menu. Now, I don't live in Oakland, California, so people in the Oakland area might know or or they know about this information, know about this history or whatnot. Uh, but I just happened to find out today about Chauncey Bailey and the story about his assassination. So it's just going to show you that journalism is not an easy work to do and your life can be Put on the line at any time you can be on the hit list at any time and you don't even know it because of the news report that you're covering so in mr bailey's case the muslims that was involved in his murder they killed him because of the fact that he constantly was reporting on the bakery and what was going on so they felt like he was causing them to lose business and lose clientele. So they wanted to out him because they thought, well, if they can get rid of him and get rid of anybody else, that they will stay in business. But obviously, that, that fired back on them. It fired back because they got life without parole and the operation is no longer around so it did not work out into their own best interest the company had to file for bank i mean not the company the store had to file for bankruptcy 
So now you file for bankruptcy. What you got to fall back on? But yeah, this is the cost that you pay as a journalist or anybody that's an activist or doing anything that's regarding to community work. This is what you got to go through and this is what you have to pay for. Your life is at risk. And you never know who is ready to put a hit on you. Who's ready to take you out the game? Because of what you're doing and what type of reports that you put out. So, uh, and also I read that Chauncey Bailey was a very outspoken individual. Now imagine that by you being very outspoken, being very aggressive and being able to articulate that into your writings and into your reports. People will look at you and feel like you are some type of threat to them. I mean, yeah, it, it gets really deep. At one point in time, I wanted to do journalism. I wanted to get into journalism because I used to love to write. I used to love to write a lot of things. I used to love asking questions. And I still do ask questions to this day. But I had other interests going on. Now, one day that might be possible. But just know that there's the pros and cons to everything. This happened to be the con the con is as a journalist you are going to be watched by other people because you're recovering a report about a set a group that is known for their heinous crimes or an organization or a business that's known for fraud whatever and they feel like if you hindering their pockets and you cause them to lose clientele, then they're going to keep a close eye on you. <laughs> but let's see what else I can uh, find on here. So Yusuf Bay, born Joseph Stevens, came to Oakland, California with his family from Texas in the early 1950s. He later opened beauty salons in San Francisco Bay in Southern California before going into the bakery business. After discovering the teachings of Elijah Muhammad in the 1960s, they converted to the Nation of Islam in 1964 and founded the Islamic Bakery in Santa Barbara in 1968. The bakery was not affiliated with the Nation of Islam, though similarities was evident. The NOI minister Keith Muhammad of East Oakland's Muhammad Mosque No. 26 stated that the two organizations were distinct and separate. Okay? So the baked goods they sold were prepared in accordance with the Quran and were free of refined sugar and preservatives. They, they named the business Your Black Muslim Bakery on the personal recommendation of Elijah Muhammad, who had become his spiritual guide. In 1971, they moved to bake move the bakery to Oakland by 1974 it was the largest bay area bakery specializing exclusively in natural food products over 6000 loaves of bread and over 300 cakes per week sold at 150 stores during the mid 1980s they appeared regularly on a local Oakland cable television lecture program true solution during during which he broadcasts his hour-long sermons every week. On the program, Bay also promoted the bakery and frequently expounded on the need for the economic self-reliance and knowledge of self of African Americans, whom he lectured the audience as being the original man, a racially charged idea derived from the Nation Islam doctrine of Yakub. By the 1990s, YBMB and its leaders were a respected part of Oakland society and had a substantial influence in local politics. They used their power to obtain favors from the city, influence local election, and avoid scrutiny from police. They ran unsuccessfully for mayor in 1994 and gained 5% of the vote. Okay. And so it goes on to say by 2007, the company was headquartered at 5832. 
St. Pablo Avenue with five branch location listed in Almadia County records, including a store on Telegraph Avenue in Oakland's Temescal District. Yeah, Temescal District and another one at Oakland International Airport. The bakery also had a location at the Oakland Coliseum. So here is the controversies. It says Akbar Bay. In 1994, Bay's son Akbar was shot four times and killed by a local drug dealer outside the Omni nightclub near the corner of Satuck Avenue and 50, 50th Street in Oakland. Court records show the pathologist's conclusion that Akbar was high on heroin or morphine at the time of his death. Three months before his killing, Akbar had been charged with felony counts of carrying a concealed weapon and evading the police resulting in a car chase and crash at 44th street and market street oh it's a lot let's go down here it says in 1994 nadir and abbas bay trial so on march the 4th of 1994 nadir bay was involved in the torture and beating of a nigerian home seller in an apartment on the 500 block of 24th street in oakland involving a real estate deal the apartment complex served as a compound for the bay organization the extremely violent incident also involved abbas bay both abbas and nadir were standing members of the african-american advisory committee on crime which also included oakland then mayor Luke, was it Eli, Elihu? Yeah, Elihu or Elahu? Elahu Harris. The committee had organized a massive conference on crime that same weekend featuring Jesse Jackson as its key note speaker. Well, isn't that ironic? Isn't that ironic? very ironic let's see what else can we find the assault escalated into a mess of incident in which 90 oakland police officers were engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat with 30 black muslims some of whom were armed the two bays and two other men were charged with felony counts of assault robbery and false imprisonment a year later, all four men pleaded no contest to one felony count of false imprisonment. The prosecutors had a had cut a plea deal in part because they could take testimony from any tenant witnessing at the apartment complex where the Bay Organization stationed its members as security like a private compound. Nadir Bay served six months of home detentions and Abbas Bay got eight months home detention. Oh, so it's a long list. It's a long list. It's a long list. It's a long list here. Wow. Wow. So this place has so much history regard to the controversies, the crimes, etc. This one, the city loan in 1996, the city of Oakland long why bmb 1.1 million dollars to start a home health care business the loan was never repaid and the home health care business was never established hmm. that's very common and and, and then this kind of goes back to what i was talking about the black lives matter organization See, what people would do is they would go into uh, starting charities or taking out loan for charities and business when at the end of the day, it's for their own personal gain. It's a way for them to generate profits. So these nonprofit organization has become an easier access for people to make money and this is all too common who can recall when the pandemic took place 
and a lot of folks took out the ppp loan right and that money was supposed to go towards the businesses but it was going into the pockets of owners and not even going into their business not even paying their employees hmm Let's see what else. I mean, I ain't going to be able to go through all this because there's a long list of things on here that I see. The use of Bay rape trial. Bay's detractors, notably East Bay Express, journalist Chris Thompson accused him of cultism, corruption, and anti-Semitism. Many accusations of physical and sexual abuse, including rape and incest, and were which and which were sustained by DNA evidence were made against Bay, culminating in felony charges which were pending at the time of his death. On September the 19th of 2000, I mean, yeah, uh, 2002, Bay turned himself into Oakland police when a warrant was issued for his arrest charged with 27 counts in the alleged rapes of four girls under the age of 14. The cases were pending trial into the following year. The oldest allegation was that beginning 20 years earlier, he, ser he serially raped through coercion a preteen girl who as a 10-year-old came under foster care of Bay and his wife, Nora. Bay died of cancer in October of 2003 at the age of 67 while the first case was awaiting trial. Wow, it, as you can see, it's a long list. It's a very long list of things that have been going on with this location and this place. So um, if you guys want to read more about your black Muslim bakery, you can just look it up on Wikipedia. You'll find out a lot of stuff. And also, as I tell you guys before, to make sure you verify sources, you go down here to the bottom of the page and look under references. Okay, look on the references and look under the external link. Okay, all right, so enough of that. I want to show you guys the uh article. This is Los Angeles Time. All right, so again, that's a picture. That's a picture of Chauncey Bailey. The article said, "Good morning and welcome to Exceptional California Newsletter. It's Tuesday, March twenty second. I'm Justin Ray. Earlier this month, an Oakland street was named after Chauncey Bailey. The journalist had a big impact on California with his dog reporting and commitment telling stories about Black communities. His name is the one." Is one that every resident of the state should know, be both because of the impact he had on California and also because of the dramatic circumstances that led to his death. To help make that a reality, I am going to tell you the story of his life and his brutal killings. All right. So pretty much mostly everything that is talked about here is what I read on Wikipedia. So I won't have to like go into it. All right, but let's go down to here where it says Bailey was known as a brave journalist who would ask the first question at press conferences. According to Oakland side, he wasn't afraid of asking official tough pointed 
and queries. He was also part of a generational black journalist who experienced both Jim Crow and the civil rights movement and brought that knowledge to newsrooms. In his whole time at the Tribune, he had a voice and perspective on the black community in Oakland that we really have not replaced since he left. Former Oakland Tribune managing editor Martin Reynolds was quoted as saying he never missed anything. He was always diligent in trying to cover these stories. People might be upset at him, but Chauncey didn't go around making enemies. Gwendolyn Carter, advising advertising manager of the Oakland Post, said in 2007, he was a wonderful guy. All right, so let's go down to here. It says, on March the 5th of 2022, a ceremony was held to name the stretch of 14th Street between Lakeside Drive and Broadway, the site of the journalist killing at the Bailey. Following the investigation to, into those who killed Chauncey and I will not utter their names, books were written, awards were won, and people went to jail. Randall recently said at the street naming ceremony according to Oakland side but the most tragic thing that happened was a son lost a father killing a reporter is akin to killing a judge or a police officer you're not just murdering the person you're attacking the role the robe the badge the notebook the, the cameras Pat Morrison wrote in 2007 all right so this is the article from Los Angeles Times covering up the story about Chauncey Bailey Now, here's the book. The title of this book is called Killing the Messenger. All right, hold on. Let me let me go back. All right, Killing the Messenger, which is written by Thomas Peel. A story of radical face, racism, backlash, and the assassination of a journalist. And I think this book was written in 2012. All right, here's the prologue. All right, so let's go into what the prologue say. That would teach them. So Chauncey Bailey awoke near dawn that fateful Thursday summer morning. By 6.30, he was hurrying around his little apartment near the western edge of Oakland's Lake Mary, folding a silver pocket square into a point before tucking it in, into his jacket, stuffing papers into the gym bag he used as a briefcase, Newspaper work and was never much of an early morning profession, at least for reporters. But a busy day lay ahead, and Bailey wanted to get at it. He took a moment to check his suit, a suit he had bought in a thrift store because at 57, after spending his entire adulthood in journalism, he had long accepted the feral realities of the news business. But in spite of his finances, he took great care in how he appeared, often lamenting to friends that too many African-Americans dressed badly. The only men a lot of blacks see in ties are detectives and preachers, he once told his brother. Throughout his career, he had both witnessed and been the subject of constant racism inside and outside of newsroom. To combat it, Bailey clenched tightly to his self-respect and that meant dressing well. He was by no means an overly talented reporter or writer, but he remained a hardened and greedy adherent to his basic craft. An editor once described his strength as the ability to get it down and, and get it in. He was good with the facts on deadline. Bailey dressed fancy. He wrote plainly. Bailey knotted a gray tie and stuffed a jewelry summons in his pants pocket. He needed to mail it back. It was just one more bother. His civic duty wasn't in a jury box. 
it it was at his desk putting out a newspaper a few weeks earlier bailey had been named editor of the oakland post a tiny giveaway weekly that served the city's african-american community it was printed just about anything written by anyone press release community notice rambling columns its main source of income was competing pastors who were always trying to outdraw each other on Sunday mornings and thus filling their collection plates by handling their coming sermon and display ads. The paper even carried a biblical quote in its banner, Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people will perish. Mm. So I said, but Bailey had his own vision for the post. He wanted to shape it to address minority issue head on. With blunt, aggressive reportage in the long tradition of black press that challenge he confided to friends in recent weeks had right him after a time spent list, listing and being adrift. He was quite he was quite simply happy to be working and determined to turn the post into an intricate slice of Oakland's life. At the same time, Bailey's often stormy personal life seemed to be coming. He had recently re reunited with his father after a long estrangement. He had a young son in Southern California, Chauncey Wendell Bailey III, and despite the geographic distance, he was doing all he could to help raise him. His son's visits to Oakland were nothing short of a joy for Bailey. People said the child brought out the best in him. Hidden behind his tough reporter persona was a soft spot for children. When he had lived in Detroit years earlier, he and his, his then wife had taken in and raised her sister's two daughters, creating an instant family that Bailey loved. Although friends said he was loath to admit it, he wanted to he wanted those closest to him to be proud of his new job title editor. But at a small paper like the Post, which ran on a thin budget, his assignment encompassed almost all editorial function. He wrote stories, took photographs, laid out pages sometimes even carried copies over the over to oakland's ornate city hall and handed them out the paper crowned bailey's days with meaningful work and in august the 2nd 2007 arrived as if it would be no different first on his list that morning was to get downtown to the post cram office in the old financial service building at 14th and franklin streets and finish a story about an oakland coat of black muslims with a long history of crimes and violence. The story nagged at Bailey. He had written it, gotten it down, gotten it in, only to have the Post publisher, Paul Cobb, a longtime Oakland activist and politician, spike it. The black Muslim that were the story's subject, a sprawling family with the surname Bay, owned a business called Your Black Muslim Bakery in North Oakland, ghetto that served as a community center and makeshift mosque its founder and patriarch yusuf ali bay had died four years earlier a blood fuel had followed for control of the strange business which oaklanders simply called the bakery it was now in the control of one of bay's many children 21 year old yusuf ali bay the fourth who was one of five sons upon whom bay had bestowed his own name most people thought that because of the bakery's Names were members of the nation of Islam. The the black separatist set of Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X, and Louis Farrakhan. They weren't though. While the Bays preached with unrelent unrelenting seals, the nation's original dogma of black racial superiority, hatred of inferior blue eyed devils, and salvation though devotion and work they and their followers were independent set. But despise their bombastic evangelism and frequent violence the bays were widely credited even admired for giving jobs to those others would not as convict recovering drug addicts the poor and uneducated those with nowhere else to go and so it says he had been reporting on the base for years and he headed out the door that August morning, wanted to tell another chapter about them. The previous month, he had run into a man who had been driven out of the bakery 
during the struggle for control of the business. Bailey, who had always admired the Bay's argue, arguments for African-American self-determination, had listened to how the bakery had fallen into chaos and bankruptcy and recognized an important story in the man's tale. Based on information from this single source, Bailey had hammered out a short piece, but Cobb had spiked it, saying it needed better attribution. Bailey had filmed, but Cobb had won the argument. The Bays were not to be treated lightly. If the Post was going to print a critical story about them, it needed better sourcing than one person with fears about his name being used. At least that's what Cobb had insisted. Bailey, though, had confided to people that he thought Cobb was scared of the Bays and was just making up excuses. Mm. It says, but Bailey also knew well the level of violence that radicalized black Muslims could commit. In 1974, as a young reporter for the San Francisco Sun reporter, he written about a handful of black Muslims who became known as the zebra killers and the death angels. For months, they terrorized San Francisco, randomly shooting whites, justifying killings through the set early teachings that salvation could be achieved by the slaying of white devils. Bailey had been one of the first journalists to report weeks before arrest that those gunmen were likely black Muslims. He also made a provocative link between the San Francisco slaying and similar shootings in Oakland and other East Bay cities, suggesting a connection. But before he could probe any deeper, he left the Bay Area for the East Coast and a new job. The next is between San Francisco murders and those across the Bay remain largely ignored. Wow. So as you can see, it's called Killing the Messenger, a story of radical faith, racism, backlash, and the assassination of a journalist by Thomas Peel. All right, so this set of Muslims, right, According to the information, they started off in the Nation of Islam. Then they went on to create their own set. So they created their own set, taking some of the Islamic doctrine, some of the Nation of Islam doctrine about the white man being the devil and the blue-eyed devil, etc., and the original man and all of that. And they used that as a way to promote their radicalism and to commit heinous and heinous crimes. Now, this sounds like a similar story about the One Nation Islam out in Kansas. It's called the United Nation Islam, I believe. Yeah, so the United Nation Islam, they were known for uh, similar things, their crimes, their rape, etc. But again, if we go back and study the long history of the Nation of Islam, If we go back to study the early history of the nation of Islam, right, it was called the Lost Fruit of Islam. It started in Detroit, Michigan, on the W.D. Far Muhammad, right? And under Far Muhammad, those Muslims that was under his leadership, this is before Elijah Muhammad came into the picture, they was going around and terrorizing people. They would take people and they were killing them if in the name of Far Muhammad, who they call Allah. So in its beginning stage, that's how they operated. Yep. But this is a way that many people try to disguise their true intention, their purpose. So they use religion as a blueprint, as a way to rationalize their reason for committing such crimes. And I keep saying it over and over, religion has been used as a blueprint to rationalize why people commit such crimes and other deviant activities. 
All right. So if you guys want to check out more about this book, again, I'm going to post this book up. All right. Yeah, the, the story is pretty tragic. It's pretty sad and devastating that this man lost his life to a bunch of radical people who envy him for a very long time because he kept up with so much report about them and the criminal activity that was taking place. So um, it was very tragic. It's very tragic to hear about how his life had ended. But anyways, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in watching. And yes, that's what it's called, Your Black Muslim Bakery. So if anybody from the Oakland, California area or the Bay Area, right, San Francisco area, you guys would know what I'm talking about. You guys, I'm sure that you guys are familiar with this story. Uh, you heard about what happened. You heard about this incident. Um, it probably didn't make it to nationwide, you know what I'm saying, because it was covered in the California area or in that West Coast region. So it wasn't really known in the, throughout the nation. But... Yeah, but if you guys in Oakland and San Francisco area, you guys probably know this story very well. Y'all probably know more than what I do. All right, I just happened to find out today. And because I was looking up a list of black journalists to cover and his name came across and his story became very intriguing. And I said, well, let me, this is something I can cover. This is something I can talk about. And that's what I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's very tragic. That's one tragic story. Let's see what the comments. Yusuf Bey was the head minister. I read that. I see that, that he was the head minister. Yeah, I see that. So I see that this group was a different set from the actual nation of Islam. So, they, so the, the founder started off as being a member of the nation and then he started his own set so if you guys notice today that the nation is on has multiple set now it's not under one umbrella there's like multiple set of nation islams and you'll be surprised to find that out uh you got farrakhan you got silas muhammad you got Eric Muhammad, um, what's the other one? Son of Man, United Nation of Islam. Yeah, it's like so many different set out there. So many different set. All right. Then I also heard that there's a different set of new Wapians. That's why I heard it's a different set of new Wapians now. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how true that is, but that's that's why I heard. Yes, he did die in the penitentiary. Yes. Yes, I went over that. He did. He died in the penitentiary from cancer. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Imam Earl Abdul Malik Muhammad. Hmm. I have to look into him because I don't know anything about him. I will have to look into him. All right, um, so other than that, that's all I have. All right, that's all I got for African American in journalism. Okay, uh, so I will come back with some more information, come up with some more subject. Uh, hopefully, later on, if not, maybe I can uh do it some other day. So until then, y'all take it easy. Thank you guys for coming through. And I'm going to make sure I look up this name right here. Imam Earl Abdul Malik Muhammad. I'm going to make sure I look up his name. All right. So as a matter of fact, I'm going to do that right now while I'm on here. All Okay. All right. I see his name on here. So I'm going to look up more information about him. 
But once again, yeah, y'all take it easy. Y'all be safe, and I will connect with you all later. All right, peace and power and elevation. Thank you for tuning in, and shout out to the new subscribers. I appreciate you guys. Subscribe to my channel. Make sure you guys like my channel, share my channel, etc. Uh, I have more coming soon, so I'm working on a lot of things. Um, so I'm taking it one step at a time, trying to get everything in order trying to get things into place but until then um yeah that's it peace all right thank you